Hi everyone. How are my trading warrior brothers and sisters today? Hello, Brock and Richard. Welcome to Face. Gaurav, how are you? Gore, how are you? Hugo, Marco. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, the metals are on the move, so let's take a look. Gold's finally coming out of here. I was wondering what was taking it so long. This pullback looks pretty orderly now. Uh, silver's been outperforming, and I still don't think the yen has bottomed. So, uh, you know, the yields and uh, gold, while yields are dropping, the PM should do better. They're finally doing that. Hi, Laura, how are you? Monica, how's it going? So until we get this bottom in the end, uh, I think it's uh, okay to be long precious metals. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if we get this uh, third drive. Almost looks like it's setting up uh, in TLT for the NFP. Maybe we get a, a weaker than expected number and we get one more push up here. S&Ps have tried for new highs, didn't quite make it yesterday. Um, I will say this on the S&Ps, under yesterday's low at 43.73, be careful. And uh, this is the first time it's made an attempt without making a new high. No, really, it's the second time. This was a new high last week. And while all this is going on, uh, we still have NASDAQ not making new highs. Really, uh, it's kind of a great exercise in FIBS, right? So I thought this change of character of the market, I didn't think we'd be moving sideways this long and we could still make a new high, but what, look at this. First rally failed at the maximum FIB level near 88.6. Uh, this time uh, 78.6 and this time 78.6 again. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I think it's going to be uh, a lot of it's going to be uh, according to the NFP, and uh, VIX is coming in a little a little stronger today. Hi, Alexander, Jami, Jamie, hello to Colombia. So we'll see what happens there. Um, you know, looking at the oil, it's pretty ugly, but we're back at some support from the last break. Um, be interesting to know if this is, uh, this looks pretty impulsive compared to this. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to get some kind of bounce, but when you look at uh, the oil, it looks vulnerable to me. And even though this looks like a, a three wave drop, ABC, maybe we're gonna get another ABC from here to take us down towards 59. So keep an eye on that. Uh, EG is trying to hold prior lows right here. Almost a full-blown retest that we have, trying to reverse. And if you're long, you could probably give it a shot and have stops under the lows. See if we get some type of reversal day to the upside. And uh, you have to kind of hand it to uh, Aussie. Kiwi's even stronger. Uh, they've been outperforming the European currency. So I'm going to kick it over to Ryan and see what he thinks. Ryan, we're getting a nice little pop in the gold market here and silver. Any feel on the precious metals? Okay, you're strongly neutral. If I kick it over to Stelios, I get a reaction here. Good morning. Hey, hey, Ryan's so. unmuted, but we can't hear him. Yeah, we can't hear Ryan. Hello, hello. Oh, oh we can he hear is. you now. We can hear you now. There you go. Hi, Ryan. Hi, guys. You all right? Yeah. How are you doing, buddy? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. Uh, seems to be a lot of uh, technical problems going on today for some reason. Just in various websites and bits and bobs. Okay. So uh, any view on anything happening over in Europe that uh, here in the States we might want to be aware of in today's session? 
Uh, yeah, a couple of things going on. Uh, we had the, the raft of services PMIs out, which were fairly solid. Uh, a lot of them were final readings, uh, which dipped a tiny bit. Um, but on the whole, just reading the reports underneath them, the, the, the future looks pretty good for the Eurozone at the moment. There's strong demand. Prices uh, are evident still that there may not be transitory. That was one of the themes coming out. Um, we saw a bit of a dip in the euro earlier, pretty much after the PMIs. Not sure what that was all about. It looked uh, like an order going through. And um, as, as you uh, guys from the States are coming on board, we're seeing yet again, this is a third down the trot, uh, a sell-off in oil uh, alongside a sell-off in bond yields. Um, I don't know if someone's doing an oil bond spread or <laughs> something like that, but uh, this is a third down the trot. We've seen a, a sharp move in, uh, in oil and yields. So okay, not sure yeah. what's going on there. Yeah, um, I guess a little bit of uh, deflation, um, you know, some type of, you know, at least a pause. You know, I've talked to some people who said, you know, now that the whole world embraced the inflation scenario that we were going to have a pause for, you know, maybe into the fall or so. And it uh, doesn't look like the metals are pausing at all today. Um, no, that's yeah. that's that's possible. But the, if you if you look at like a short term chart of, of oil, 15 minute chart, um it's pretty clear around about this time, the last three days, we've had a, we've had these sell offs. You see those, those candles there and, uh, you know, do the same. Go back. Uh, yeah. Can you open it up a bit, turn a bit more? Um, just enlarge it. You'll see the, the one going back to, there we go as well. So that's, that's three days we're seeing there. Yeah. And uh, the same move, pretty much the same pattern in uh, bond yields as well. So uh, they've dropped this morning from 1.18 intends to 1.15 at the moment so looks like some sort of trades going through uh, each time could be a model or something yeah so far we haven't taken out the 113 low on yields um we'll see i thought that maybe uh the bonds could have one more push to new highs but these aren't the highs of the move so you have to keep that keep that in mind it's really you know what could be considered a bear market rally after the big break that we had after COVID. I mean, uh, not many people thought that we would take out this uh, COVID crash low. It's one of the only markets to take out the COVID crash low um, on the board. And now we're back into this major resistance zone up here around 154. So it's going to be an interesting, uh, are we starting to get some whisper numbers on the NFP that you're hearing? Or what the market's no, looking for? Too early? Not, we'll yeah, a bit too early. Probably want to get the ADP out of the way because uh, oh, any yeah. whisper numbers that, that happen now are going to be, you know, changed after ADP. Yeah, uh, ADP is becoming as important or uh, as yes. the NFP lately, isn't it? It is, but the the, the correlation is, is pretty crappy. I mean, every month if one looks at ADP as a as a precursor for the NFP and you know, the amount of times it's missed or been different. Um, but gives us something to trade, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, the, the best uh, one is know. the Canada, Canada ADP, their jobs one. Oh, it's absolutely atrocious. They give a flash reading for the next month, which might be up 200K. And then when that month comes around, it'll be down 400. <laughs> Interesting. Hilarious. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I look at the euro right here and uh, I'll, I'll bring uh, Blake in. Doesn't this look like... Uh, some type of flag that's developing here, Blake. I mean, you know, we had this first run, got through resistance, and really all we've done is move sideways, and Euro looks uh, constructive to me. I, I only see bearish moves in Euro, so whatever develops okay. bullish, I just ignore. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I, I know. I'm joking. No, uh, you, you know, as far as the Euro goes, I'm, I'm, I'm really not – I mean, you could, you could look at that and say, um, you know, maybe we're developing bull flag pattern, which – I think is possible uh, as long as we stay above the 11850 level. So okay. uh, and right here. and I've been I've been looking at 18 11850 11850 as being support key yeah. resistance at 119 and maybe the ADP is what uh, moves the needle and and um, by the way good morning guys and good morning Ryan how are you Yeah morning Blake you're right Yeah yeah I'm uh, I'm good well yeah I'm good I'm I'm as good as I get it at this time in the morning so <laughs> <laughs> um, so we do have, you know, uh, real quick, and I'm going to, I'm going to take over really fast, Dale, and I'll, I'll right, just reference, buddy. 
reference what I was. Uh, you you, you were right when you said sell copper when I was bringing it up last week. Uh, <laughs> yeah, came, hey, you know that that, that was more of a that was more of a, a tongue in cheek type of thing. Yeah, but um, but hey, good, good you know, call, what, tongue in cheek. Hey, whatever works. <laughs> um so sometimes luck uh is a great skill to have i'm in, not against uh, it nope me neither a little bit of luck goes a long way um so what you're talking about here is like a bull flag pattern and yeah. this being the uh the flag pole and what you'll notice here and this is why i said 118.50 is like right around this level right around this that's well, 11840 but yeah you, you get you get the picture here yeah um We've been looking at 118.50 for the last, well, let me go double check that, uh, 118.30. So, I mean, these are all really, really important support levels um, as, as, as we come into a, a really important week. And it's not just ADP, it's also ISM. But before uh, I talk about um, all that data that's coming out this week, because we have ADP in four minutes, if you guys have not, um, uh, read about the uh, NFP competition. Make sure you guys get involved. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, Forex Analytics just tweeted the, um, the our, our house account just tweeted the uh, uh, details to Ryan's post. So make sure you jump on Ryan's uh, post. And, and Ryan, you want to talk a little bit about this really quick? Yeah, it's just a, a fun competition that, that we're running, you know, guess the uh, non-farm payrolls number on Friday and uh, we're going to have two winners and uh, those winners who, who get closest to the number uh, are going to win a free month each on the, the platform. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and this doesn't prevent those of you guys that are already members or, you know, you're, you're part of the Forex analytics community or Forex flow community. If you guys win, we just tack that on to uh, that extra month onto your account. So uh, anybody can win. And everybody can win. I already put in my guess. I'm I'm coming. Yeah, in, I'm, I'm I'm coming in sub sub the uh, the headline number. What do you, what? And, yeah, I'm going low. Three eight five. I said next next month is going to be. I'm going to come in higher. I think we're going to see a surge in uh, in 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 job creation over the next couple months. But I think this month might be a little light. What do you think, Brian? Yeah, I think we have to do a league table of uh, the folks at uh, Forex Analytics. I, I've noticed uh, Dale hasn't put his on yet. So uh, they're all they're all hiding. They're all scared. <laughs> oh. I mean, I, I'm, I'm so. I'm calling it on. I'm calling it on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, I'm I'm actually typing to our our mem our guys right now. Yeah, get them on. Get them on. Uh, yeah, so, what, what so in the house competition. Uh, what, got an ADP or? Yeah, for ADP. Well, we're looking for 695,000 jobs as a forecast. I, it's basically the same as last month. Um, yeah. You know, and, do, and let me ask you this. Do you think it's going to be a market moving event? It will be if it's, if it's wild. You know, yeah, if it if comes in an, something if like... it's an out, outsized, outsized type of number. Yeah. Look, probably you're looking at 300K either side. You're going to get a move because, as I say, all the economists, they're sitting there with their tipex and their razors and... Whatever happens here, they'll, they'll be changing their NFP calls. Um, we'll get a flood of that coming out. Um, NFP is, what, so I think about 80 expected uh, this month, just off the top of my head. Um, so, oh, yeah. For, uh, for, for, I'm sorry. For, for NFP, NFP, yeah. Oh, yeah, NFP, NFP, I think we're looking for 850,000, something like that. Yeah, 8, 8, 8, 850, 875, something like somewhere around. I know there's yeah. a couple of different estimates running around, but yeah, 8, over 800K. Yeah, 880 on, on Reuters at the moment. So, yeah, we'll get, we'll get all the economists, uh, you know, join things up. But the thing is, you know, how much is it going to mean for the dollar? I mean, you know, we've had pretty much good jobs reports. Uh, last one was obviously quite good. Uh, it was the one before that was a, was a bit softer, but it was still, what, 500-odd K, 560, something like that. Yeah, and uh, was, uh, you know, actually, last the last one was – are you talking about – I'm sorry. Go ahead. Just to, continue on. Yeah. So the, the last one was 850. The one before that, I think, was was the one where everyone was expecting 2 million or something. It came up at, what was it, 560 or something like that. Um, so a lot of expectations. But I think that what the, the Fed are looking at is this big divide between the amount of vacancies and the amount of unemployed. Because you've got 9 million vacancies, give or take, and you've got 7.5 million still unemployed, as they say. So that ratio needs to needs to come in before the Fed really take notice. Uh, here right, comes, five seconds here comes to go. A number. Yeah. 
Yep. Okay, I voted. 330. Look at that. Wow. Hey, I, you know what? My NFP guest this, this year might actually be, or this year, this month might actually be spot on. Yeah, well, 575. I, look at that. I, look at that. I look went the for the number, here. the number of the beast. 666. <laughs> oh, did you? Well, hey, at least you're in. Hey, I'm a big Iron Maiden fan. Okay, that's why. <laughs> is that the reason? That's fine by me. Okay. So you know, here this is interesting. We had um, we had a strong employment data out of New Zealand yesterday, and everybody that everybody's that's been um, watching the Morning Edge webinar that that happens in about um, exactly one hour from right now. Everybody that watches the Morning Edge webinar, I tell them every day, don't be bearish to Kiwi. I am not bearish to Kiwi. And, you know, we, it's it gave us a false breakdown and we're rallying. Now you just added fuel to the fire, putting on um, putting on some weak uh, uh, ADP data. And so dollars out there getting crushed right now. So, you know, I, I, I don't know. This doesn't speak well for uh, for. Um, for you know tapering so what do you guys think and, and by the way good morning stelios what do you guys think here i mean weak data is just good for stocks that's the way we have to look at it good morning everybody i agree blake and uh, i think central banks want to find excuses not to taper or be to be more dovish so this is a f fueling that and um uh, stocks are gonna like it um yields are dropping i'm waiting very patiently remember guys when i closed my bond shorts 169 and change and i said i'm waiting for the descending trend line which is like a two-year trend line which comes in at around 180 on, on, on the boon on the boon yeah 178 and a bit and we were at 169 170 and i said you know i'm gonna wait for that if you go further back to 2000 2019 late 2019 i don't have it here i'll have to go oh, okay. pull up a different anyway don't worry don't worry um Oh, you have it there. Look, you have the, those three spikes there. One, two, three. Uh, anyway, don't worry. Don't worry. Um, uh, anyway, it comes in around 178 and change. I'm going to start shorting 178. Uh, oh, I, I got think... it. You're, you're talking this. I'm talking about the... Uh, I'm, no, I'm talking about the, uh, the high from August 2019. It's just to the left. There you go. That one, then the next one, then the next one. And it's... Uh... Ah, wait a minute. Hmm, that's weird. I don't have that spike up there. Maybe we're looking at a different, different thing, right? instrument. Yeah, it's a different instrument. Oh, you're looking uh, at the 10 Y. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at the Bund. Just the Bund. Bund. Oh, UND. got it. Okay. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's 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 similar. If you take away that spike, it's uh, similar. And I've been waiting very patiently for uh, for some time now for 178. I think we're gonna get it, and that's where I'm gonna start shorting again. But you know, to answer your question. Um, Bad numbers, obviously not helping the whole tapering and hiking, unless you're, you know, Norway or <laughs> countries who are actually going to do something. Um, but the Fed is, is kind of in the corner, you know, they're, they're in the corner, they still have high inflation, PMIs are still, you know, coming up um, uh, at uh, well inside expansionary levels. And um, I don't see how inflation is going to drop within the next uh, you know, two, three months. There was one of the Fed members, uh, who was it yesterday, who said, we think it's going to be until something like September, October. You know, they actually put a number to it, to when they think the inflation is going to start dropping and, you know, given their assumptions, basically. So we have an idea now when to start panicking. <laughs> so um, I, I doubt that we're going to see inflation come back down uh, this quickly. Not, not this year, I don't think. But um, obviously, we'll, we'll have to see. Was, uh, you know, talking about like maybe, you know, higher inflation uh, is, is obviously we've, we've, we've had this conversation a lot over the last couple of uh, uh, all we talk about, it seems like these days is just inflation. And one of our, you know, favorite inflation hedges, as far as, uh, you know, instruments go, you've got gold and silver that are now starting to perk up. And actually you got silver challenging. Actually, this is uh, if you, if you go uh, again, I'm just going to reference our bias chart. I, I don't think there's been a day in the last week and a half that we haven't written down 2590 or 26. You, you guys have to go. Those of those of you that are Forex Analytics subscribers know that this has been channel resistance for us for the last you know couple of weeks, and um, we're up at basically channel resistance right now. I mean, we're spiking higher in silver 
gold spiking higher too, up into range highs. And by the way, this is a range breakout. Just if gold breaks 1835 or it breaks below 1790, you play the breakout versus assuming which way it's going to go. I know a lot of people like to assume because they're you know so smart and they've been trading the markets for as long as they have that they can outsmart the market. So they just assume they know which way the market's going to go. But in a case like gold, I mean, we've, we've basically been range bound for the last month and a half or month and month and a week. Let the market do the work for you. Don't, you, know, you don't have to be smarter than the market in this case, and especially like when you got a big triangle. triangle. What's that? Looks like an ascending triangle. Well, um, I have it as a, I, I, I'm marking it as more of a, uh, a symmetrical triangle. My biggest problem that I have with gold and, and, and you know, our, our normal listeners will know this is that, you know, if inflation is such a big issue, why hasn't gold been a, you know, a, a you know, bigger mover as of the last year. And, and I've, I've actually had conversations with uh, Bill Baruch at, uh, at, at Blue Line, um, uh, capital, uh, you know, the, the owner of that brokerage firm in Chicago Blue Line, and Blue Line Futures. Yeah. Blue Line Futures, excuse me. Thank you. And, you know, I've had conversations with him. We've done interviews about this and I, I really am worried about gold, just not really respond, being very responsive. Now, maybe it'll play catch up sooner or later, uh, but maybe it's just, uh, it, it's also, uh, uh, you know, a very strongly inverted to the, the dollar. And I mean, we, we can't, you know, did we, no one can, no one can argue that the dollar hasn't held up well in this environment because it, it actually has done quite well based on, you know, what we've seen. So I don't know. I, I you know, we, we don't have to make the case for gold right at this moment in time, but I will tell you that I think it is, you know, in, in a, in a triangle and it's symmetrical, right. And uh, it, it, it might be symmetrical, excuse me. This, this one is uh, an assumption, but you know, we are going to get up towards that, uh, the upper end of this potentially, you know, uh, potential triangle. And then, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens from there, but they are on the move this morning. Um, now, Ryan, you mentioned that uh, silver or excuse, excuse silver, uh, that uh, crude oil has been rolling over and it's rolled over quite hard the last couple of days. And, and if you were, Listening on the face webinar yesterday, we had face, um, sorry, not face on our morning edge webinar. This bear flag pattern completed yesterday, and you can see it, it completed perfectly. I'll take you over to an hourly. We were uh, talking about that. We're like, okay, it should stop right here. It did. And then obviously, we this is overnight until European trade, but uh. How do you guys feel about crude oil here? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on here. As, as I mentioned to Dale, if you you know you've got these three candles now, or these three moves that have happened roughly the same time every day, uh, three days on the trot. It's coincided also with a drop in, in bond yields, so it, it looks like that there's some sort of big trade going through. Um, that's you know take away the the fundamental side of things you know when you when you see moves on the clock like this it, it always stands out and you've got to think that there's something going on um behind the scenes you know we never get to hear about it till after the event you know might hear next week that such and such bank or fund was put through a load of sell contracts or something but it's a it's a strange move i mean you know We've got the underlying current, as Dale mentioned, about possible slowing down, stagflation, all that sort of thing. That's that's the underlying current that seems to be flowing through bonds and and uh, commodities and you know growth expectations and so on. Um, so that is still there. Uh, and you know, is it going to change soon? It's not going to change from a central bank point of view. Uh, looking at the the ADP just now, but yeah. I, just quick, just quickly on that, I want to mention regarding ADP. Um, you know, the market's probably going to go, oh, that's going to keep the Fed back and, you know, lower for longer and all that sort of stuff. And, and, and let's... Just, just to mention that I, I mentioned that too. And I was like, you know, stocks probably are going to get a lift from this, but actually S&Ps are at their lows. So sorry, continue on. I just wanted yeah, to point Yeah, what, what I was going to say is that it, although it's a big miss, um, you know, 300,000, yeah. it's still a positive number. And in normal times, 330 would be a big number. Uh, that's true it's a good point and I'm, I'm looking at the report there's only one sector in the adp that was down and that was information and that was down a, a thousand jobs so it's a, still a positive report what will 
you know, that's that's making it a, a trend of positive reports that, that we've seen. Okay, it's not over the 500k mark that many people might expect, but it's still a plus number. And as long as that trend continues, all that's going to do is keep things positive for for the Fed. It just might change their, their the length of their timeline, how long they taper for, um, and when they announce it. Um, but I, I don't think that's going to change. That's that's going to happen. Uh, towards the end of the year, we're going to get a decision one way or the other. Um, and as I said, just before the ADP, we've still got this ratio to to narrow between the jobless that are still out there and the vacancies that are growing month by month. And until that gap closes, you know, then you're not going to see much go on the jobs as far as the Fed's concerned. As long yeah. as you're incentivizing people not to work, that's going to take some time to close. That, exactly. That, um, You've got to that, take that away. That's that's uh, been you know so I, I know uh, I was I was talking to Jim Welsh from Macro Tides regarding this um, you know a couple of weeks back you know all the, all a lot of well many states have um, have uh, retired that um, that program um, you know so you're going to see people going back to work I think over the next couple of months so I guess you know the question that we all are still asking is you know November or J- November December or January when's when when is the tapering going to start? What's the pace of it going to be? And I think those are still questions that uh, you know need answers, and and the market's going to be looking for. Uh, I want to point out that yesterday the S and P hit, uh, it, and again I'm going to reference this uh, bias chart. We do this every morning on the on the morning edge that is for you know, Forex analytics subscribers only. We also do the daily roundup and European crossover. A lot of webinars that are specifically for Forex analytics clients personally or privately, excuse me. But the the 4375 level has been a, a level of support that we've drawn since here. Since we, since we broke into new highs uh, above that, uh, that 4400, um, we're like, okay, as long as we stay above this previous support, which is, was hourly support, that's going to be it. And that has held as support for literally the last, you know, couple weeks now. And so the reason why this is so important is because this is almost, I want to say the like the line in the sand for the market is really the, 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 the wedge support, which comes in around 4,300. But really, you know, bulls right now are hanging their hat on that number. And it, it took us almost to all-time highs yesterday after that, uh, respecting that number. And I think this is going to be the number that we all should be focused on going into um, the jobs report on Friday. I don't, I don't know if we're going to actually break that number, um, you know, pre-jobs report over the next couple of days. But that is obviously what the market's looking at. So if, you, if there's anything that you can take away from today, write down S&P you know, 4,375 and just put an asterisk next to it, put an alarm on it, you know, and just, and sit on that number for a while. Cause I think that's going to be really important. Um, going. I, I love, I love patterns like that. You know, that to me is, is just gold. You know, you get in uh, across a good, decent period of time in you know, a couple of weeks, like you say, you're getting solid support showing up on the top side, you're getting solid resistance. Um, you know, I'm, I'm actually going to go away from here and I'm going to, look to plot some buy stops and sell stops just on either side of that range because it, yeah, it just looks and juicy. I, and I think that makes a lot of sense because look, look we, we searched through these highs. We're probably going to see the, the upper end of this wedge, which will be the 161% extension. So, you know, you can, you can say, well, you know, on an upside breakout, which is entirely possible, you know, uh, you know, give, give us like, you know, some, some porridge that's not too hot, not too cold. It's just right. You know, you give us a, a jobs number that's, really not super hot, but it's not super cold. If it's just right, we're going to be sitting up here by the end of the week. Flip side to that is, you know, uh, something that some porridge, you guys get where I get that reference from. Am I too old? <laughs> I <laughs> depends what you mean. <laughs> po- then I'm using- porridge, oh, porridge in the UK means jail time. <laughs> but, oh, no, no. I'm talking about the, 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 uh, the, the um, three bears. Little three bears, you know, the poor. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You guys they got know. killed on the S and P rally. Is that what? It, oh, is that what it is? I, I'm the thinking three little like bears. Maybe they're, at, they're gone, you know, man. As I as I approach fifty years old I, uh, this year, that I'm maybe I'm too old for this, and I'm saying you know kids rhymes. Anyway, I um, wrap it up, Gramps. 
Sorry. All right. So the, the support might take us back down. Breakthrough support will take us down to 4,300. So um, I'm going to leave you guys with a couple things. Um, and I heard Steve pop in a little earlier. Steve, good morning. We'll see you on the, uh, everybody's, you know, excited to have you back and have you back on the, uh, on the, the morning edge. Uh, Stelios, have a great one. Ryan, thanks for joining us today. Don't forget Cheers, guys. Our, our non-farm payroll uh, competition. It, it's on the Forex Flow, um, it's it's uh, the Forex Flow uh, tweet. I, I actually, I think I retweeted it. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, make sure you, you follow Ryan. So he's running that uh, competition. You get, you know, a free month of Forex analytics. Um, also, uh, guys, don't forget that we have a special pricing that's in, pl in place because of the merger between Forex analytics and Forex Flow. So your buy one month, get one month free, semi-annual, annual subscriptions. We haven't run a discount since the beginning of the year. So it's been almost almost eight months since you got a, a, an ability to get Forex Analytics at a discounted amount. So take advantage of that because of the merger of Forex Analytics and Forex Flow. And I want to say, um, Dale, have a great interview with Peter. Peter is one of my more favorite people um, you know, that I've listened to over the last you know, 20 some odd years of watching 25 years of watching financial news on the boob tube, you know, so I always enjoy listening to Peter. So you guys are in for a great interview today. Uh, so welcome Peter Bookvart um, and give him a warm welcome with Dale. So thanks, Dale. You're welcome, Blake. All right. Cheers, guys. All right. See you guys. All right. Good hunting, everyone. Hello, Peter. I'm trying to uh, make you a panelist. Uh, for some reason, it's not letting me, so I'm just going to allow you to talk. Peter, how are you? Can you hear me? I got you, buddy. Oh, some kind words. I appreciate uh, what your guest just said. Uh, yeah, that, that's Blake. Uh, you have a lot of fans here, Peter. What's the NFP going to be in light of what we just saw from uh, the ADP? What do you think? Well, I, I, it, it's not a good thing to draw a line between ADP and BLS on a monthly basis. Uh, okay. But I think that the ADP number was certainly a reminder that uh, there is an issue with the supply of labor. Uh, there is not an issue with the demand for them uh, as seen in the level of job openings. So uh, no doubt that there is now risk to the downside in this number uh, following this report. But again, uh, we, we've seen plenty of months of offsides between ADP and BLS. So, uh, not going to jump to any conclusions just yet. Okay. Well, then why don't we talk about uh, some of the things that you've been writing on your uh, website, Peter? Uh, uh, first of all, it's interesting. You know, um, I, I've talked to someone who served in different administrations, and uh, he was on with me uh, uh, about a month ago, and he said that uh, I read your writings that uh, you also believe that Brainerd is going to be the next Fed chairman, and that. Uh, this, well, the possible uh, the po next. I, possible. I, I still think okay. I still think that um, Powell has a shot because there's a lot of politicking uh, that's going on behind the scenes here that uh, uh, Powell can easily get reappointed. Yeah, I, I've heard people say uh, at this stage of uh, uh, this economic recovery wouldn't be such a great idea to change uh, Fed chairmen. Do you have a view on that? That's a possibility. Uh, you, know, you also have to deal with the political and personal dynamics between Janet Yellen and Brainerd, if she is it, because they're going to work closely together. Obviously, Yellen has uh, knows what she's getting with Powell, even though she knows what she's getting with Brainerd, too, because they were on the committee together. Uh, that dynamic is in play here. Uh, she's a little more progressive, but I mean, you know, uh, uh, Paul has definitely fallen in line with. He knows. Oh, they're all the, they're all the same thought, no doubt. So, but same I, I cloth, that, right? Yeah, but I just think that you know that they're just also uh, political and personal uh, considerations here as as well. So, uh, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if Powell is reappointed, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, he handed the keys to to, to Rayner. Does this remind you of the seventies? Uh, strangest landscape I've seen in a long time. Peter, with uh, job openings and uh, people, you know, not wanting to go back to them and, you know, all the artificial 
uh, stimulus and, and payments, entitlements. Um, uh, Delta has reared its head a little bit. Uh, have you ever seen um, anything like this? Uh, do, are we in stagflation already? Uh, what do you think? Uh, we are uh, in stagflation, certainly in, in particular sectors. Uh, all you do is look at the, the housing industry and that's just the, the, the perfect example where you've had uh, house yeah. price inflation being so aggressive that it is now creating sticker shock for a lot of potential buyers, uh, particularly the, the first time buyer. And that then in turn slows uh, the pace of transactions. Then you throw in also, of course, you have a problem with the supply of product uh, yeah. because builders can't find enough lots uh, or find enough materials or labor to, to build those homes, which then creates, exaggerates the supply constraints, which then further increases prices and therefore turns off potential buyers, particularly that first time buyer. And that first time buyer is a very important piece of the, the housing chain, because when you think about the trade up buyer needs to need, needs a first time buyer to sell their home to. And if, that first, if they can't sell that first time to that first time buyer, then they're not uh, moving up uh, to, 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 a, to a bigger home. So th there's a variety of problems that this creates. And of course, you shift to the auto sector. Yes, you have um, a shortage of semis, which then leads to a spike in used car prices, a rise in new cars. And then you reach a point where buyers are saying, oh, my God, I can't believe I got to pay this for a car. And that slows things down uh, in the EDP number we talked about earlier. Uh, you can't get enough workers. That leads to a more elevated level of unemployment. Uh, at the same time, you have all these inflation pressures. So it's it's definitely a form of, of, of stagflation, which then just creates uh, an even bigger problem for the Fed because um, they, they're not going to know what to respond to. Now, we know that they're focused more on the, on the jobs data. So you talked about what are the uh, comparisons to the 70s. Well, Arthur Burns was the chairman of yeah. the Fed from 1970 to 1978 or 79 when Volcker came uh, right. uh, over. And uh, Powell seems pretty intent on, on, on being the next Arthur Burns. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's a lot of things happened. Bretton Woods uh, was the end of that. A lot of things happened in the 70s. Uh, uh, I'm wondering if you could explain to me and tell me if there's any significance uh, and if it's isolated with just Wells Fargo about them pulling uh, personal credit lines from people. Uh, and I mean, they, I, I, I did see that and, and I don't know what yeah. went into that decision because there are plenty okay. of other banks and other financial institutions where you can get credit lines. So okay. I don't All know right. what so the aggregate. It might be a Wells Fargo said. specific. Uh, how about right. uh, what's happening with uh, the problem of too much liquidity for the banks and all these reverse repos uh, uh, kind of breaking records uh, with reverse repos and the Fed backstopping some type of money market uh, fund for the banks. Uh, can you explain what the problem is about banks having too much liquidity? Well, it's just a, a, just the, the symptom of the, the Fed just way overdoing it uh, and, and, and shoving uh, reserves down the throats of the banks that then uh, it, it ends up back at the back at the Fed in reserves. I mean, that, 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 that's the, the, the craziness of, of QE is that it sort of drugged these central bankers into believing that it's you know, economically stimulative, which is no empirical data whatsoever that it is. So they take, they, they, they give banks the cash, they take the bonds off the market, uh, and then basically they shovel the bonds right back out in these reverse repos. I mean, you, you, it's just a game of whack-a-mole is what this is. Uh, but the, the problem with, with debating this and discussing it is that the Fed thinks that QE is economically stimulative, even though it's not. And then they have to deal with all the unintended consequences of, of, of this, this overload of liquidity through these, you know, alphabet soup of, of different facilities okay uh we've had a real uh i i thought a week or so ago when we put this low in peter if you could see my 10-year yield chart i thought that might be it and we're kind of getting a retest here any view on yields uh, uh you know we had this uh, real nice move up to me 
it could still just be corrective this decline in yields. Uh, you think we're going for one percent or? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm 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 in the belief that inflation is sustainable and persistent, right. uh, which would obviously be negative for bonds. But on the other hand, uh, a lot of this curve's flattening and and the leg down in yields came in the middle of June when the Fed said that they're beginning to talk about tapering. Because when you look at okay. each of the episodes of QE, when it was on, when it was off, when QE yeah. was on, the curve steepened. When QE was off, uh, or or was tapered. Uh, Q, uh, the, the yield curve flattened. So that's when you started to see the flattening. And then you throw in, of course, Delta variant. And then the growth worries that inflation is now causing, because higher inflation is now causing a slowdown in growth, both in real terms uh, at the GDP level, but also real wages. And obviously, growth slows just, just naturally if you, if you can't get stuff. Uh, so that's why we're seeing the drop in yields. But there is a tug of war between uh, the, the inflation story on one hand and the growth slowdown we're seeing on the other, the net result is stagflation. And, you know, we'll be, there'll be some days when the long end is going to respond to these higher inflation prints because we're going to still see a slew of higher inflation prints in the months to come because any, any, any moderation we see in the pace of goods inflation, which maybe we see in used cars, but I think will be offset by others, is we yeah. are about to see in the, uh, in the CPI and PCE data a sharp increase in the pace of rental increases. Uh, we're seeing uh, apartment list national report for July, which came out uh, last week, which is showing massive increases in, in rents. Uh, so CPI is showing like two tenths to three tenths increases in month over month rents. Apartment list is saying they're going up 2% per month, month over month. In fact, uh, their July report said that from June to July, uh, rents went up two and a half percent just in the month, and that year to date, rents are up eleven point four percent. Just year it's to date. It's going to be a revolution, Peter. Uh, so you know, uh, yeah, I, that, I that's forty percent. People... Yeah, of course CPI. That's forty percent of course CPI. So yeah. if you show me a decline in used car prices or a softening and, and a drop in lumber prices, I'll show you rents and I'll show you a ten-year high. In the CRB World Industrials Index. Well, if you build a, a, some type of wooden bed in your car, you're okay. Right. Could live there, right, Peter? I mean, so, this squeeze on the middle class is unbelievable. I mean, you know, uh, uh, these prices, uh, you know, if you're uh, very affluent, it's like water, money's like water anyway, it just keeps flowing. But, um, you know, what's going to be the outcome? Uh, with uh, people being squeezed. I'm trying to remember uh, the 70s. Uh, you know, I was uh, uh, having too much fun to remember it, but uh, I was in the business and I remember the win button. Remember that, Peter? Whip inflation now? Yep, um, I, uh, I, I was a kid, but yes. Yeah, yeah so uh, I don't know what the button's going to be um, uh, for this. Uh, what do you think of uh, what's happening? Uh, with uh, this Delta variant, uh, you know, you said we'd be able to go to a concert this summer and, you know, Lollapalooza in Chicago is definitely a, a big concert. Uh, a lot of people, um, you know, next to each other. Uh, do you think the efficacy of these vaccines, which drop sharply after about six months, is going to be a problem this fall? Um, I don't actually. I think we power through this. Okay, cool. I said uh, for two reasons. Number one, we have no choice. We're yeah. not shutting down again. It's just not happening. And yeah. number two, okay. yeah, I do think that they're gonna. While, while maybe right. they'll see a, a lower level of efficacy, it'll still be rather high. And if you look at the data, the data, not anything else, right. ninety-nine percent of the people that are being hospitalized haven't been vaccinated. Okay. So, if you look at those numbers, that that's the fact. Uh, also, the faster Delta spreads, uh, the faster we're going to get to some level of herd immunity because you're going to tap that on to people that have already had COVID plus the vaccines. So um, okay. just look at India uh, a few months ago. The, the numbers yeah. skyrocketed and then it came crashing down. Uh, look at the right. numbers in the UK that continue to fall. You know, there Good is point. a level of herd immunity out there. Uh, the problem is, is not necessarily Europe that has high vaccination rates in the US, but it's, it's Asia where outside of China and maybe Singapore, uh, there's been low levels of vaccination rates. And that's where <clears throat> you're seeing a problem. Now, Japan 
I'm sure the next two months is going to really ramp up vaccinations. But Thailand, I think only 5% of the people have been vaccinating, vaccinated. COVID's ripping through Indonesia. Uh, but on the other hand, again, uh, not, not to be callous with, with, with people getting uh, hurt by this, but there will be, uh, uh, that's one of the benefits of a fast moving virus is you're going to get to a level of, of, of herd immunity or natural immunity much quicker. Okay. Um, you know, we've seen a little pressure in some of uh, the commodity markets. Uh, once everyone uh, did embracing, you know, uh, the inflation scenario, you have copper coming off, you have uh, uh, more like the economically sensitive commodities, okay, copper and oil, oils come off. Uh, do you attribute that to just a little bit of a COVID scare um, in Asia, taking a, a little bit off GDP world growth and not yeah. as much demand? Yeah, I, I believe so. Uh, I think definitely Asia will see a slower pace of, of, of growth. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you know, I mentioned the CRB War Industrials Index traded down yesterday, but Monday's close was at a 10-year high. And the okay. reason why I bring that up and then I like to look at this particular index is because it includes things that aren't traded on futures exchanges, which you are know obviously- the symbol of it, Peter? Uh, I mean, on my Bloomberg, it's CRB uh, space R-I-N-D, Robert Isaac, Nancy David. So it has tallow in it, it has hides, uh, it's got resin. So you, you don't, you're not trading futures on that. Uh, whereas, and, and, and would show that it would better reflect pure supply and demand as opposed to you know, speculator emotion in, in, in the copper or oil market. Okay. But so, what's go going ahead. to keep commodities elevated for a while is just the lack of investment, particularly in energy. I mean, we, we heard from BP and Royal Dutch and Chevron and Exxon and Conoco in the past week. None of these companies are, are aggressively investing in their business. They're just basically trying to maintain their, their, their current uh, exploration projects, maybe adding uh, small ones here and there. So, yeah, maybe we see a, a drop off on the demand side, but uh, you are not going to find uh, any major supply increases, uh, certainly in the non-OPEC world uh, of note. And if anything, uh, shale is going to remain uh, well below its production levels of 2019. So um, I, I would be um, buying any sharp commodity pullback uh, that if we do get it. You still like metals, right? I love precious metals. It's been maddeningly okay. frustrating, particularly this year yeah. when while yeah. they had a great 2020 with silver up about 40% and gold up 25%, uh, the, the, the backdrop has played out pretty well with the inflation story, the, uh, the drop in real rates to record lows. Uh, now, the dollar, of course, is up, so that's been a slight headwind, but the dollar is barely up. You know, the dollar index has gone from 90 to 92. I don't call that yeah. much of a rally. So you'd think that with everything going on, gold and silver will be much higher, but they're not, they're down in the year. So it's been a frustrating year being bullish on it, but I remain so, I still think that the bull market is intact. And um, okay. people are gonna realize that not only will the Fed go really slow with this taper, if they even get it off the ground, because you still have plenty of doves out there. Um, but even if it takes them a year, rates are still gonna be at zero. And if I'm right on inflation, real yields will still remain deeply negative. Speaking of bull markets, Peter, is there ever an end to this bull market? S and P's. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I think it a lot will depend on on this inflation story, uh, just because it's something that no one really has any experience with. Uh, the nice. So would the higher yields be the pin that pops? Um, well, I I don't know if it'll be higher yields or it will have to be the Fed's response to it. Um, okay. And, and, and yeah, because if the Fed does start to taper because they have no choice, uh, because the inflation stats remain high, then we know, you know, looking back over the last 10 plus years, the, stock's market, the stock market doesn't like a tightening. We corrected after QE1. We corrected after QE2. We, there was a correction. We had the taper tantrum. And then when QE3 was tapering off, we, 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 we had a correction then. We had a correction in the two months following the first rate hike. Uh, in December 2015, we remember January, February 2016, yeah. we sold off. We had a sell off when Palo was you know, pushing it with uh, rate hikes in the fourth quarter of 2018. So 
there is, that's when you have, that every correction of note has taken place outside of COVID, of course, has taken right. place when the Fed has been walking in the other direction. And if the Fed is about to start walking in the other direction, that is a setup for uh, a, a correction of the markets. Is, could it be that easy, though, Peter, that people could just wait for the bell to ring? Well, look how easy it was on the flip side. Whenever the Fed started easing, it was close your eyes and buy stocks. Right. And, 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 and March okay. 2020 was the perfect example of that last year when the Fed said they're going to start buying corporate bonds in addition to cutting rates to zero and doing massive QE. Well, it was time to buy stocks. Right. So, okay, you so know, unfortunately, you know, it, it, it has been that easy. I'm just so skeptical about, yeah, all you have to do is wait for one thing. But, you know, going back to Marty Zweig, I guess it it is a key. And uh, you just, no one's going to change. And, you know, maybe people don't even change right away on that. We get initial market reaction and they say the market could handle it because the Fed has prepared the ground. Uh, we, for we, it, we always hear months. that. We do always we? hear, oh, rates are going up because that's a good thing because that yeah. means the economy is getting better. Oh, the Fed's tightening. Oh, that's a good thing because the economy is getting better. Happens every single time, uh, but that is the initial reaction. Uh, and then, of course, something breaks and that changes. Okay. Anything you want to wrap it with, Peter? It's really great to catch up with you. I, and I what's the number that, one thing? Number one thing on your mind? It's this inflation story. It, it, okay. If, if it has legs and if it is persistent and sustainable, um, the, the Fed's going to have a big problem. And as is the economy, because the, the economy is not set up, uh, the world's economy is not set up for higher inflation of, of, of persistence. The world's level of interest rates is not right. set up for that. Uh, yesterday, we closed with a $16.5 trillion of negative yielding bonds. That is not prepared for persistent inflation. So it all is about inflation and where it goes from here. Okay, we're going to uh, wrap it on that and uh, inflation being the key and not necessarily yields on their own, but the Fed ringing the bell. Yes. Thank you. So, thank you so much, Peter. Really great to hear your voice and catch up with you. And Same here. Thanks, Dale. I, I, I encourage people to go to Peter's website. He does have free access to some great research and you could follow him on Twitter at pbookvar. And uh, I always turn the volume up when you're on CNBC, Peter. I appreciate that. Thanks so much, Dan. <laughs> All right, buddy. All right, so take that's, care. A, that's a wrap, everyone. Peter Bookvar. Um, inflation, inflation, inflation. Uh, that's what uh, undoes what's been happening since uh, 2008. So uh, keep an eye out for the bell to ring by the Fed. And uh, looks like Peter also thinks that Brainerd is a possibility. Uh, for the next Fed chair. And I appreciate everyone paying attention and hanging out with us. That's going to be a wrap. Good hunting the rest of the day. You could join the team in about 17 minutes, 22 minutes for the morning edge. And don't just count your inflation hedges, count your blessings, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Adios.